Well, good afternoon, brothers and sisters of the hook. It's not often that you hear me say good afternoon, but this, as promised, is a couple of clips from my underwater video we did at the last trip where Big John was on fire in the front seat. And since I wasn't catching too much early on, I decided to go ahead and drop the cams down and see what we didn't catch. Now, you'll see as the cams are descending, I go through a school of what looks like baby amberjacks, or somebody's called them amberlines. They are not almacos. They're a little bit too big. But when the cams hit the bottom, they turned on their side because they must have been sitting on a um, little platform or something, hit something and rolled over. I fix them here in just a minute, and you'll see that um, when I flip it over and get it straightened out. And I am not going to narrate the entire um, video and tell you what every species is every time. I'll just name the species as you can see like the the sheep's head there and the trigger fish and the pork fish right there. Um, as soon as I name them all maybe one or two times, three, four times, whatever. Um, I'm just going to let the, the video run and you'll be feeling what it's like on the bottom because there's absolutely no sound and I've got the sound on on all my cams but you don't hear anything um, it's it's awfully quiet down there and how these fish communicate is just a mer mystery to me um, God knows how it's how he created these things and, and they communicate with each other we don't understand it yet but they do and yeah, there we go now I've got it straightened out cams are straight and through it sometimes I will probably slow it down and put it in slow motion because things happen so fast it's just unbelievable down there um, okay the fish with the spots on the tail there those are just your typical grunts that we use for bait there's a red snapper and don't tell me about putting a filter on my cams because I'm not going to do it. That in the background there is a either a lane snapper or a, a mutton snapper. That is a unicorn fish that just swam by. Anyway, in the past I brought bought different colored filters everywhere from an orange filter to a red filter. Uh, to filter out the light to make it more natural and what happens with these cams is it goes black so I cannot use any filters on these cams okay unicorn fish pork fish that colorful yellow thing down on the bottom there with the black stripes those are pork fish not good to eat a couple mangrove snappers there you know the fish that we didn't catch Lots of action going on down there all the time. And this is just one little section, approximately 25 minutes. There's a red snapper. 25 minutes of looking at one little section of a rather large reef. So you can imagine the hundreds of thousands of fish that are all over this place. A couple of vermilion snapper going by right now. And there's a small vermilion probably too small to keep oh and while I'm thinking about it hold on a second here where'd they go okay I forgot to take my paper last time, so happy birthday to Francis Coloso and Hunter Byron. Happy birthday, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell. By subscribing and clicking the bell especially, you'll be notified when I put up a video. That was a por um, porgy just was swam by right there. Anyway, click the bell and you'll be notified when I put up any new video. You'll get an email. 
I don't know what's going on with all these unicorn fish. I think they're in spawning mode or something, but there's just a bazillion of them out there. There's a couple times when there's so many of them you don't see any other fish. A nice vermilion right there. Of course, mostly grunts. Grunts, grunts, grunts. Unicorn. Mangrove snapper. Trigger fish. Nope, nope. Unicorn fish. Actually, it's when we go to reef number 11. I dropped the cams down there for about 15 minutes. And at reef 11, there was easily twice as many, three times as many uh, trigger fish. But a quarter as many um, vermilion snapper. There's lots of vermilions here. There's one big one and one small one. There's a trigger fish. Vermilion snapper, sheep's head. Lots of variety, huge variety of fish out here. One of the things that I like to do after I've watched the clips at least once, there's a unicorn fish. You can see why that little black thing on the top, that's, a, that's his little horn. Mangrove in the background there, nice big one. And another one behind it there on the bottom. What I like to do is go back through a second, sometimes a third time, and not look at all the fish in the foreground and try to see what's in the background. Because I have seen, you know, flounder that you can't see initially, that sort of thing in the background, way in the background. So I usually watch these clips um, two to three times at least before I make any video. Nice quiet space right here. I call that bait. <laughs> And as I'm sure you can tell, it was kind of cloudy on the bottom, but a lot better than it has been in the, the past couple weeks. The top, it's clear. You can see probably easily 40, 50 feet down. But then it just starts to get a little bit cloudy. But this is what I consider pretty clear on the bottom. Now, although you don't see too much right there on the bottom, look above the bottom at all the fish up in the column. I mean, it is stacked up. They're stacked up on top of each other. I think that was a Almaco just scratching himself on the bottom. You see, every once in a while you'll see a fish, you know, rub himself on the bottom, and I guess they're getting rid of parasites like that um, mangrove snapper just did. You know, just like your dog likes to get scratched, these fish like to get scratched. There's some jacks, I don't know, blue runners or something, mixed in with that pork fish and that unicorn fish and that red snapper. Yeah, lots of different fish. And these unicorn fish are exceptionally hard to catch because they have such a tiny mouth. Look at that little tiny mouth. Look at them all. Isn't that crazy? And as I recall, many years ago, maybe five, six years ago, I caught one of these uh, unicorn fish. They were uh, from the bottom to the top, and some of them were on the top. And I dropped a shrimp down with a little bitty hook on it and caught one of these guys. Took it home and cooked it up. And as I remember, it wasn't too bad. Um, I guess, there, you know, there's less, less meat on it than there is on a flounder. But... Uh, of the same size but as I recall they weren't bad tasting but nothing like triple tail 
School of Jacks going through. And these Red Snapper that you see here are not the monsters that you're going to see near the end when I go to reef number 11. Even though there are some really, really big Red Snapper out here, this section right here, well, I did not see any great, great big ones. Um, but there's some action at the end of this video. You'll see it's kind of interesting. Now in a second here, you're going to see a great big mangrove come into view. Off to the right of the screen here, he's coming into view. Why we didn't catch any mangroves? Mystery. Why we didn't catch any? Look at that big old mangrove. Vermilion snapper, and there were plenty out there like that one there and that one there. Um, that just tells me I need to drop down a sabiki with some squid or something on it and keep it up above the, the grunts in order to catch some of these vermilion snapper. But they're all down there. They're all down there. It's amazing. It's just amazing. This is where I'm going to begin lifting up the um, cams from the bottom. And we're going to go through a school of jacks, I believe, as I'm lifting it up. And you'll be able to see what the uh, ledge is that I've been talking about in the background. See it there? There's a series of little outcroppings full of weeds and grass and stuff like that. And coral, old coral heads, I guess. And that's what all these fish are living along. Kind of cool. Now this is as I am lifting the cams up, going through the massive amount, this biomass, huge biomass of jacks. They are just absolutely everywhere. They were thick coming up. And the next clip is going to be where I drop the cams down at reef number 11. There's, there's quite a few spots out there. Look at that red snapper way up in the column just on not too far under the boat that's where the big ones were they weren't on the bottom the really big ones were in the mid column in the upper column okay let's go to reef number 11. okay here we are at reef 11 and i'm fixing to drop the cams down pay very close attention at how quickly you see these red snapper now this is in the afternoon when we were fishing at um, reef number 11 as these cams are going down 10 15 20 feet oh look at there there's a red snapper look at in the background there's a red snapper those big old fat red snapper are all the way up just under the boat and behind the boat and all around 20, 25, 30 feet down at the most.
and I did not drop it close enough to the culverts. Those are culverts. There's a barracuda. Those are culverts way in the background there. There's a lane snapper. Red snapper, red snapper, lots and there's a bazillion grunts around these culverts too. Mangrove. But it's a little bit murky. The water's a little bit murky. But way in the background are the culverts, probably 30, 35 feet back there. Mangrove snapper with that line through his eye. That's what that was. Triggerfish. You're going to see a lot more triggerfish here than we're over at um, the natural reef. And every once in a while, mixed in with all these grunts, you'll see the occasional vermilion snapper. Um, they look to be about the same size as over there at the natural reef. And some of these trigger fish, I know, are big enough to keep legal size. they got to be 14 inches this year. Who knows what they're going to be next year? Maybe 25 inches since people are catching some. <laughs> just being sarcastic just being sarcastic all right I'm about to change cams and show you a different direction uh, from one of the other cams at this at site number 11 at the same spot just the cam pointing in a different direction because um, there's something interesting going to happen here near the end of this clip and it's a lesson that I learned pretty quick here. All of those grunts and fish and, and trigger fish, when you all see them going in the same direction, they're all heading for a line that either I threw out or John threw out. They seem to know. And that clicking sound that you hear is nothing but my metal clip on the top of the cams as the boat is going up and down in the waves. It's pulling on the line and making it, making the metal against metal clicking sound. How about all them sheep's head? Look at that. Mangrove snapper. Angelfish. How about that big mama red snapper right there? Look at the shadow she's casting. That's how you know she's big. That's about a 30 incher. That's a little guy. And let me tell you something else that you do not see in these big red snapper or any fish down there uh, in the uh, time that I had these cams down. You do not see any hooks or line in them. So that tells you that there's not many fishermen out there catching these and losing them. There's just a lot of fish out there. Okay, you see that uh, almost in the middle top of the screen there? That is a live grunt that I have on a hook that I wounded 
and it's up in the column and you'll see that there are very few fish that are paying close attention to it and it is a dying or wounded fish that should be attracting attracting lots of attention um, but the trigger fish come near it and they look at it but it's above the the sea floor and that's going to be a secret look at that big red snapper going over there to kind of take a look at it you'd think that if she was hungry you know that's a wounded grunt she would eat it but nope But of course, if a shark were to come by, and one did not, if a shark were to come by, he'd just eat that up in no time at all. I was just glad there wasn't any around. Now, the reason that it's going up and down is because I've got it in a pole holder, and that's the wave action actually pulling my grunt up and down. I am not doing that on purpose. Now you see fish are going over there constantly kind of taking a look at it and investigating. But I've got like a 10 aught circle hook in that fish. And, you know, the trigger fish go up there and they'll take a little nibble out of it. But they back off also. Nothing, there's no big fish goes over there and seriously wants to take a bite out of it. And actually, you'll see that one of these great big red snapper go up to it, look at it, and intentionally leave How about that? See what I tell you? She says, no, I see that big old circle hook and I'm leaving. But, boys and girls, the story is not over yet. And off to the right in just a minute or so, you will see the tail. I believe it's the tail of a Goliath grouper. And then you'll see that Goliath turn and look kind of at the cams. How about that big lane snapper there? And yeah, I know you saw that scrawny old little barracuda go by.
Now, like I said, I am not jigging this grunt. That's the boat rising and falling in the waves. You'll see some of these big old snapper, they're starting to pay attention to her. And off to the left, or off to the right there, you see that uh, Goliath tail. There's a nice mangrove. He's not paying any attention to that grunt. It's too big for him anyway. Okay, somewhere very soon I see that I'm not on the bottom and I open up my bale and let the let that grunt hit the bottom. And as soon as that blasted grunt hits the bottom, now the red snapper begin to pay attention. All those other fish begin to pay attention. It's like they can't see the hook because the fish is on the bottom. Look at that, three of them. And watch that big one in the middle. Whoom! And off she goes. She's got that grunt in her mouth, but she spits it out. She manages to spit it out because I had that big old circle hook that didn't catch her. And that Goliath went after it. And just to, in a little bit, you can see my uh, near the upper part, upper right of the screen, that my grunt starts to come back into view. Anyway, my lesson that I learned was put the live grunt on the bottom. Don't put it up in mid-column uh, unless, you know, you've got some fish way up in the column um, that you want to catch uh, or sharks. But put that, uh, put your bait on the bottom. That's all I can say. If you've got a live grunt, put it on the bottom. Now, as I'm bringing these cams back up to the surface, um, you got to realize that I've got about two and a half hours of video that I could show, but that's just way too long. Look at that red snapper way up in the column. Anyway, boys and girls, happy fishing. Go get them. It's a lot of fun, isn't it? And especially, God bless you all, and may your poles be bent over double. Go get them, guys.